Outlaw, Macho, drive in. Um, I think this is one of the more underrated on a cell matches. Lesnar and Taker at No Mercy. Yeah. Like, at a ruthless it, aggression era. Yeah, Taker. Would you, yeah. Would you say it's underrated though? Because I think it's it all. It is kind of like a standard bearer for somewhat of how in I, how I, when you, you stay inside the cell, that's how the match should happen. It is, but you really never see anybody talk about it too often. Like, um, yeah. anytime I mention it, it gets like laugh reactions, mainly because people, you know, just have a disdain towards Lesnar. Um, it's like, you know, Lesnar, the good worker, and this match here, especially only being like eight months into the company at that point, is perfect. It was Aker doing his best, you know, like ruthless aggression era. Um, big evil work. Um, Lesnar was, you know, pretty much earning his spot in this match. Um, it was physical as hell. Um, helped turn Lesnar, you know, face for a few months. Um, Heyman was great on the outside because uh, there's like a part where like Akers just is winning the match and Lesnar is just or Heyman is like Brock we're losing Brock yeah. and he's just like cr hanging on to the cell just you know watching what's going on um it has, I think at that point it was Lesnar's best match it is now, I think this match is it, actually more than the Rock match this is the match that made Lesnar that's I agree that's I match. agree that's what made him love and it has one of my favorite laugh out loud moments because not because it's like you know funny or stupid or anything but it's just you know Taker went into the match with the broken hand where he had you know it, it was and Lesnar kept targeting that hand and everything and then mm -hmm. during the match Taker just you know puts Lesnar's hand and he just stomps the shit out of Lesnar's hand it's kind of like payback's a bitch <laughs> so he, yeah he kind of like is giving it back and you're like oh okay it got, it felt real. It felt like Taker was, you know, he just had it. He was pissed off that Lesnar was targeting the head, and he just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it's funny, in this match, Lesnar's doing some of his best heel work, then he turns babyface right afterwards, but he, he does some of his best uh, heel work at that time in this match, because, you know, on the road to SummerSlam, he was just basically running through people. This one here, he's showing a lot more he's of his sadistic. physicality. He's more Yes, he's he's brutal in this one, yeah. and it's it's one of those things that just it's a gem for the ruthless aggression era, because yeah. this match kind of epitomizes like that era. Yeah. It's and that freaking counter is it's scary how he did it. It's not like WrestleMania yeah. 30 where it was kind of like you know where it's so so. This one was like just he just reversed it. He tossed him yeah. in the air. He didn't like you know shift him over his shoulder. He just through take her up and just into the F5 position and you're like whoa yeah. Shit. yeah now I probably saw that match one time but to answer your question when people talk about it was there any big time spots in no. that match and that's what I'm thinking the problem is that people got accustomed to when they see Hell in the Cell exactly. they see good. something so when it's yeah physical Wrestling, brawling, you know, staying inside the ring stuff, people seem to overlook it and stuff like it's, that. It's it's physicality with T, um, mm -hmm. but without high spots. And that's, I think, why I love it so much is because it's, it's Taker. A fight. It's basically a case. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the veteran Taker and essentially a rookie who's the world champion showing how physical they can be, tell a story. Story without high spots. It has psychology behind it. It's probably, honestly, as far as cell matches go, it probably has the mm -hmm. most psychology to any cell match at that point. Yeah, and that's why I can see how you overlooked. And I and and I see, I, and that's why I expect more from Hell in, Hell in the Cell too. A good build up, a good feed. You don't have to be. It's up to who's in it, and that's the problem. Like, like let's like we said, Sammy versus KO. They don't have to go outside the ring. They probably would, but if they don't, I'd be fine with that because they yeah, they do well because, together. They work with each other and stuff and like again, that. And again, like I said, it's the, the cell more than how you can use the cell for violence or anything. It was more about the symbol, the symbolism of like this is the end. This is 
this is the ultimate, you know, this is the ultimate fight we're yes. going to have. That's, yes. that's, of course, mm, that has not been the case for a few years now. But it is yeah. so. how. And yeah. then the other side, it's shaming man in there. Yeah, that's going to be a big spot, no matter yes. what. It could be yeah. shaming man versus uh, Master Heater's favorite Reginald. That's going to be a big spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He's not denying anyway, I'm, it. So, I'm, yes. I'm so I'm so I'm so, ha- I'm so happy that Lily is gonna is gonna is gonna just kill that guy. Yeah, probably. If you like that video, please click like and subscribe to our channel for more content from the driving. For full episodes of our podcast, you may look us up on Anchor, Spotify, or wherever your favorite podcasts are available. Just search for Outlaw Much Show Driving. And if it's not too much trouble, would you help us out here? Spread the word. Share. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you. Bye.